Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but Joe Biden and Donald Trump are going to be having a presidential debate next month, okay? That's a, it's the showdown of the century for both of them. And uh, they're almost each a century old. So it might literally be the showdown of the century. Um, and uh, it's, it's got people acting a little strange, okay? Some people are getting a little horny for it, okay? Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking about it a lot, you know, and, and in the immortal words of Jeff Tiedrich, I think there's only one way that this can go, which is that Joe Biden bicycles into the debate hall, dismounts, runs up a ramp to his podium, one-handedly chugs a bottle of water, slams the empty bottle down onto the le lectern, turns to Trump and says, sup, fuckface. That is a tweet from Jeff Tiedrich that he has tweeted not only just, just now, but he actually also tweeted that exact tweet back in 2020. The same exact tweet. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Jeff Tiedrich, Jeff Tiedrich is a, uh, he's like the primordial Trump reply guy, okay? He, like the orange man bad, like that, the concept of orange man bad has been boiled down into Jeff Tiedrich. That is like, he is the avatar of that sentiment, okay? He's the OG. This guy, when Trump was on Twitter, this guy was the first reply fucking every time on every goddamn Donald Trump tweet. You'd go in there and De Jeff Tiedrich would be like, wow, sounds like, sounds like BB had a bad day. Ooh, ooh, stinky. That's because you wear diapers, Donald Trump. Like, that's the type of stuff that this guy would do, okay? It is just, oh my God, all right? And you can see the energy in this tweet. Joe Biden bicycles into the debate hall, dismounts, runs up a ramp to his podium, one-handedly chugs a bottle of water, slams, it's, it's getting bad out there, okay? It's getting bad, it's bad, okay? The copium, the copium fumes are getting dangerous. Make sure you're carrying your gas mask around with you. Uh, because y you never know. You don't want to fall victim, okay? You don't want to pass out. It's, uh, it's bad. So, uh, yeah, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are going to debate in June, um, which is going to be an incredibly funny event for the rest of us for approximately 30 minutes. And then it is going to be an incredibly sad event for the rest of our lives. Um, because the fact that the fact that Joe Biden versus Donald Trump round two is where we're at as a country kind of just says everything you need to know. Um, neither Donald Trump nor Joe Biden has been looking particularly hot in public lately. Uh, Joe Biden, of course, uh, has been getting absolutely obliterated by his own party uh, on the issue of Palestine, which we're going to discuss in another segment shortly. Um, and his responses have been, frankly, pathetic. Um, and it's not looking good for Joe Biden within his own party. Uh, polling is not going in his favor. Uh, he is terrifyingly close to Trump when uh, previous to uh, Joe Biden's approach to uh, Israel-Palestine... Joe Biden was basically clapping Donald Trump. Um, and, of course, uh, you know, some people say, oh, you know, that issue doesn't matter uh, because, you know, Republicans uh, don't care about it and uh, it's only students. But that's not true. Uh, this is very clearly an issue that has activated a lot of people. And specifically, it has activated people within the Democratic Party, the people he absolutely needs um, to win. And each poll, uh, internal or otherwise, is showing more and more people uh, concerned about this particular issue. So Donald, so uh, Joe Biden is 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 having his own entire uh, spread of troubles right now. And of course, on the other side, we have Donald Trump, who um, quite literally looks like he's going to die at any moment. Um, I have never seen a man look more cooked except for maybe Rudy Giuliani. And uh, 
for those of you who don't know, literally yesterday, Rudy Giuliani uh, went missing trying to avoid a court summons. Kind of wild. They got him this morning, though, after he tweeted publicly that he was trying to avoid uh, a court summons. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of hard to beat Rudy, but if there's a second place in the old man melting while still alive competition, it would be Donald Trump right up behind Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Trump recently uh, made the news for going on a unhinged and deranged rant about Hannibal Lecter. Uh, let me see if I can find that clip, actually, because honestly, we deserve to see it. We deserve to see it in all its glory. Um, silence of the Lamb. Has anyone ever seen the Silence of the Lamb? The late, great Hannibal Lecter is a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Remember the last scene? Excuse me, I'm about to have a friend for dinner as this poor doctor walked by. I'm about to have a friend for dinner, but Hannibal Lecter, congratulations, the late, great Hannibal Lecter. So, now in the full clip, I, I realize this isn't, they don't have the full clip here. I wish we could get, where's the full clip? I wish I had the full one. A lot of people use just that one. And I wanted to be fair to him, and also, uh, I'll just tell you this. He starts a little bit earlier by talking about how other countries are emptying out. This is me trying to do my best to remember exactly what he said. He says, other countries are emptying out their insane asylums. You know what an insane asylum is? It's like a mental hospital, but 10,000 times worse. You know, Hannibal Lecter, the late, great Hannibal Lecter. Um, so... I just wanted to be fair, you know, because a lot of these, uh, these, these communist news sources left out extremely important context of him talking about insane asylums that are super, they're super mental hospitals that are being emptied out by other countries into America. And now there's a lot that's, that's on with, Do obviously with Donald, with Donald Trump talking about Hannibal Lecter. It's, it's a very strange thing to do. First of all, he seems to think that Hannibal Lecter is a, a real person and not a character. You know, he says the late, great Hannibal Lecter as if Hannibal Lecter is somehow dead. Um, Hannibal Lecter is not dead unless, I guess, if you uh, are talking about the Hannibal television show, um, which I guess you could say maybe he's dead. It's not exactly clear, but I guess you could come to that conclusion. But Hannibal Lecter isn't dead. Um, the actor who plays Hannibal Lecter isn't dead. And also, it's very strange that he calls him the late, great Hannibal Lecter. And then he also says congratulations to people for Hannibal Lecter. And all of this is a part of a rant in which he's supposed, he seems to be implying that other countries are sending their Hannibal Lecters to America. So even with the, I just, you know, I gave you the context because I wanted you to understand that even with all of the context, in fact, I would argue that the context makes it more deranged and confusing. Anyway, the entire point of this was to point out that this is where Donald Trump is at. So we got Joe Biden, who's in, currently locked in a fight to the death with his own party. And also, we already know, it's already been talked to death that Joe Biden can't, uh, can't you know, communicate uh, uh, well at all, especially these days. He's been stumbling all over the place, looks terrible. And uh, uh, combine that with Donald Trump talking about Hannibal Lecter, the state of affairs in America is quite grim. And uh, the fact that we have Donald Trump even running for president again, this, this dude who um, completely lost his mind and refused to acknowledge his own loss. He couldn't even say, you know, ah, I lost, but I shouldn't have lost. Instead, he had to claim that there's a global conspiracy against him. And that guy's running for president again. And there's a possibility he becomes president again. There's a real possibility that the future of America 
is going to have Donald Trump round two. This time, believing that Hannibal Lecter is both dead and a good person and that immigration laws are bringing more Hannibal Lecters over. The debate is going to be two doddering old men in a verbal slap fight. I cannot even imagine what it is going to sound like to listen to that debate. Of course, we're going to listen to it here on this channel. But let's be real. It's hard to really laugh at that all that much, knowing that come November, one of these two people is going to be continuing control. Uh, obviously, I really, really, really do not want to see Donald Trump as even come close to the halls of power ever again in this country. But is it not just emblematic of the damnation of American existence right now that the best alternative that anybody could come up with is fucking Genocide Joe. What a tragedy. What a goddamn tragedy. And talk about, talk about a party that has completely failed its own constituents. Joe Biden is, this is the craziest thing. The latest wave of polls show that the Democrats are kicking ass in congressional races. They're kicking ass all over the place, okay? Dems are kicking butt in the Congress, okay? But, the, but Democrats are struggling with Joe Biden, which goes to show that it's not, it's not that people are too scared of the Democrats, that they're communists, but rather that Joe Biden specifically is so uninspiring, so unlikable, so morally detestable that even his own party constituency doesn't want to vote for him and is struggling to gather the will to vote him into office. And yet the Democratic Party just keeps on trucking behind him. And even that, and more so than that, the mouthpieces of the Democrats are more insufferable and condescending and cruel than ever. These guys have been losing their goddamn minds on national television, on social media, on YouTube. They've been blathering and blaming their own voters for Joe Biden being asleep at the wheel, somehow asleep at the wheel on half of every goddamn issue that he talks about, and also extremely vocal about an ongoing genocide in Palestine. Genuinely deranged. And I gotta say, for all of the obnoxiousness and insufferability that we all have to go through and all of the anger and fear and frustration that I feel, there's one small, tiny, tiny relief that I get in the fact that I called this garbage. I've been calling it this whole time. How stinking long have I been pointing out the fact that liberals, all the way back in 2020, you guys can go watch my, my old stream VODs and you can find me talking about the exact, like, I, I remember a panel, a debate panel that I called into in which I said that the fact that Joe Biden is the only op option that the Dems can come up with shows a total uh, absence and failure of imagination, of a political vision, all the way back in 2020. And here we are again. The liberal section of politics has nothing left but condescension. And it is exhausting. Because the crazy thing is, that if the liberal establishment, if the libs could actually, for just one second, put their pride aside 
their smugness and their uh, their 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 high horse nonsense. If they could put it aside for one second, they could probably get more support for their candidates, but they won't. Because if they do that, then it calls into question the structure of the Democratic Party as it stands right now. It calls into question the morals of a party that exists, uh, that, that fuels itself on the existence of the Republicans. That the current state of the Democratic Party, they if it was a vacuum and people had to just choose a leader instead of choosing between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, they would. there is no one in their goddamn right minds, not even the libs, would go for Biden. The only reason that Biden is propped up at all is because he can fearmonger off of the nightmare that is Donald Trump. And what that means is that the current state of affairs uh, uh, is, is, a, is a false choice. It's a, it is a, a pile of continually ratcheting reactionary garbage. And it's no surprise to me that with each passing year, the libs start to squeak in just a little more reactionary bullshit. Joe Biden giving a fascistic speech about how uh, they need to crack down on terrorist student protesters with no evidence whatsoever, just pontificating about how he needs to, he wants to convince people uh, uh, that the, the totally imaginary violent student protesters need to be put in their place. Him denouncing free expression from the office of the president. Do you guys remember back in 2020, uh, Joe Biden giving that one speech that we all made fun of about him saying, you know, don't shoot him in the head, shoot him in the leg. You remember that? I feel like that was such an emblematic moment for where we are at as a country. You get to choose between, I'm going to shoot you in the back of the head, Donald Trump, versus, you know, we should just maim you instead. Don't, don't kill him. Come on, Jack. Maim him. It's a bad state of affairs. Okay? And no amount of delusional coping about Joe Biden is going to change that. Okay? The, 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 the current state of the Democratic Party is one that is more than happy to, uh, uh, to, to, to be asleep at the wheel. As long as it's within a controlled amount, they want that heat to be high enough. It's wild because you hear liberals go on rants about accelerationists. The, the goddamn Democrats are the ultimate accelerationists. They want, they want the American people hurting and afraid of somebody like Donald Trump so that they can remain in power. And that is a pathetic state of affairs. A, a Democratic Party that had some kind of vision would not be playing nice with a president like Donald Trump. You notice how liberals spend all day, every day, talking about how Donald Trump and the Republicans are the most dangerous threat to democracy that has ever existed, and the best that they can get you to do, the best that they can pitch to you, is, oh, why don't you try phone banking? Why don't you try, uh, why don't you try voting for Joe Biden? Why don't you try giving some money to Joe Biden? I want to say a special shout-out. Just real quick, because we're getting real mad about the Democrats. But right now, right now, as I'm streaming this, and as you are watching this live or as a video in the future, there are a ton of people out there right now protesting, making a lot of noise, making their voices heard, slowing things down, chalking up and gumming up the gears of the war machine right now. There are people out there doing that, and I want to do a shout-out to all of you. In fact, there was... Uh, in my, in my very own chat, I wanted to shout out one of our users. One of our users um, 
uh, came in, and and I don't want to get. I'm not going to put usernames out there because I don't want to put anybody on blast. One of our users before stream came in and said, "I won't be able to make stream because I'm out protesting at a pro-Palestinian protest," and I want to say that's fucking based. That is amazing, and a huge shout out to all of you out there who've done this, who've supported those people. Good, but let's hope they come out to vote in November. Shut the fuck up! Would you shut the fuck up? Jesus motherfucking Christ! Did you, have you not been listening? Oh my God! Have you not been listening? If those people don't show up to vote in November, that's on you, Lib. That's on you and your boy. These people are politically active. You've lost the mandate of the most politically active people. Do you know how bad and stupid and pathetic you have to be to be the current sitting incumbent president and to lose even the most politically active people, your for sure voters? You've lost them. And you want to get mad at them and be like, well, I sure hope they vote in November. If they don't vote in November, there's one person to blame for it. Joe Biden. And by Joe Biden, I mean the Joe Biden collective. Because Joe Biden is your representative. He represents all the people who are gung-ho gung for him. It's absurd. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The total, complete, and utter blinkers that people have on, on this, on this topic. Every time I talk about this subject, you have a bunch of people who roll up to feel like a keyboard warrior. Okay? And I mean that. If you think, if you think, uh, uh, if you think that, uh, that, that people tweeting on the internet about uh, political opinions that they have as a keyboard warrior, imagine that, but times 10, okay? That's, that is the level of keyboard warrior that you're on if you go online and you just mime out, don't forget to vote in November, as if there aren't literally stickers put up by the state itself on every street corner saying, I, don't forget to vote in November. Congratulations. You have the sentience of a fucking sticker on a lamppost. My God. Oh, I completely forgot it was an election year. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. My God. People have no idea. People have no idea of the stakes and you want to know what's crazy is that the lib types, uh, the lib types, when when uh, if Donald Trump wins in November, they're gonna sit there and the first people they're gonna blame is literally everyone but themselves. When the best that they could muster is going into chat rooms and and comment sections saying, "Don't forget to vote for Biden in November," and then they're gonna go, "The left is destroying this country." As like leftists are like, sorry, I can't go online today because I'm going outside to go protest. As leftists are sitting out here putting their heart and soul into protest art and into getting their message out. As leftists who are a minority, who do not have the, the control of the presidency, are doing everything in their goddamn power to shift the, the, the public inertia. Same as it's always been bunch of status quo warriors who live vicariously through a machine they have no say in. Anyway, this section has gone on for way too long. I look forward to watching the debate with you all, but I do not look forward to the debate on a general uh, level because I think it's going to be depressing as hell. I think the state of politics in America is about as depressing as it's been in a long time. Uh, and I truly hope, for all of our sakes, that we can find a path towards a better world uh, because it is a very difficult situation that we find ourselves in right now. Anyway, if you found my impassioned rant moving, make sure that you press subscribe. And of course, leave some comments below. I like to hear your opinions, unless you're just going to say, vote in November, which I'm sure 100,000 of you are going to do. But you know what? Go ahead. Do it. Go ahead. Tell me to vote in November. Joke's on you. Anyway. Thanks for watching.